in this computer. All right, let's get started. Welcome back for the second session of our uh, IT140 live uh, meetings. So last week we talked about, what we talked about? The basic uh, Python syntax, right? How to do input, how to do output. And I uh, hope you still remember those syntax and that's the basic, uh, you know, information processing unit. So let me share my screen. Um, before I share my screen, actually, um, let me ask you a question. So um, how computer represent numbers or information rather inside the silicon? Anybody have any idea? So I don't quite understand it, but I understand it's binary codes. It's either zero or one. Oh, Very no. good. So you mentioned the binary. So what is binary? Um, actually, let me ask you another question. Maybe this will, um, so can you, you can see my finger, right? Okay, anyway. Uh, use a one hand, how many numbers can you count? Anyone want to answer that question? How many maximum number you can count using just one finger? Uh, one. Five. five? Or one. How many different numbers you can count, right? Using uh, one, just one hand. Sorry, um, I'm sorry, one finger. I'm, I'm, uh, I mean one hand, five fingers. Five? Five, okay. So five um, is certainly uh, valid for, because we're using decimal, right? You know, one, two, three, four, five. But what if I tell you I can count more than five? As a matter of fact, I can count um, 32 numbers in one hand. Do you believe it? Okay, here's how, how it goes, right? So I use this finger, the thumb represent number one. And I use this finger, if you can see, represent number two. This one is number four. And this one is number eight. And this pinky number is number 16. Is that upside down or can you? That's right. So, okay, so now we have just imagine, right? Our each finger is assigned a number, a base number. This is one. This is two. This is uh, four. This is a eight, and this is a sixteen. Now I want to count all the way. So zero is nothing, right? If I don't show you any finger, that's that's zero, and the thumb is number one. This is number two. So far so good. Now, if I represent the three, that's one plus two. So this is three, good. And this is four, right? Just one finger. And uh, if I want to represent the five, that's four and one. See that? Four and one. And six is four and two, right? Four plus two is six. Seven is four plus two plus one. So it's seven, this is seven. And eight is just one finger, eight. Nine is eight plus uh, eight plus one, right? Ten is um, eight plus two, right? So and so on and forth. And if I have all the fingers up, what's the number represents? Anyone? Adding them all up together. Yeah. So it's one plus two plus four plus eight plus sixteen, which is somebody give a. Sorry, 32 you said, I think, or? Is that 32 or 31? I, I didn't count, yes, but something in so 30 something. It's 31, right? Um, actually, this is how you calculate, right? Yeah. So you have five um, positional numbers, right? Think about if it's a decimal, if we have five digits number, how many numbers you can represent using five digits in base 10? Right. Each digit have nine different symbols or 10. Zero is a symbol. So zero, one, two, three, four, two, nine. It's 10 different symbols. So each digit can represent 10. The second digit is 10 times 10 is 100, right? Can you represent 100 numbers using two digits? Uh, and three digits is, you know, a thousand. Then fourth digit is a 10,000 and so on and so forth. For the binary that we are talking about here, the first uh, digit represents two numbers, 
And the second is two to the power of one, uh, two to the power of two is four numbers. And two to the power of three is, is eight numbers. Two to the power of four is 16. And we'll have five fingers. So it's five different uh, binary position is two to the power of five, that's 32. Okay, that's how we calculate it. So that's the power of, of binary. Um, that's how computer represent the number and, and the information internally. Okay, let me show you, uh, you can see my screen, right? Let me show you a, a slide, not slides, a video. I'm gonna share my audio, uh, share, hand it on. And uh, see, I'm gonna take off this. All right. Share my uh, audio stereo and show you how binary is powerful, um, how powerful is in you know computer systems. Uh, here you go. Take a look. It's a common theme throughout the modern world that everything in a computer's brain comes down to ones and zeros. You've most likely heard that this code of ones and zeros is what's referred to as binary. And while almost everybody knows that this is somehow related to what computers do, very few of us seem to understand what binary is or why computers use it. If you want to know, then this video is for you because it's actually a very simple concept and still quite fascinating. Before we get to computers, let's talk about what binary itself is, as it existed long before computers did. Binary is nothing more than a system of counting. To understand how it works, let's look at two other systems of counting, tally marks and the glorious base 10 positional that we all know and love today. Tally marks are the simplest counting system imaginable. However many things you have, you put down that many marks, easy as pie, but not very efficient. Meanwhile, base 10 positional, which is what we use today, uses a different symbol to represent different amounts of things. With the numbers zero through nine, we can recognize that each symbol indicates a different amount of things. If we need to represent something higher than nine, we add a digit to the left, roll this first digit back to zero and start over. This system is very efficient compared to tally marks because each digit we add exponentially increases the amount of things we can represent. Because in this system we add a new digit every 10 things, each digit represents an increasing power of 10. This is the number of ones we have, the number of tens, the number of hundreds, the number of thousands, and so on. Now this is probably something you already know, but it's very important to keep it in mind when we talk about binary. Now binary works the exact same way as based in positional, but instead of each digit going from zero to nine, it goes from zero to one. Counting upwards in binary sounds like this. 0, 1, 10, 11, 100, 101, 110, 111, and 1000. Because each digit of binary has only two values and not 10, each additional digit represents an increasing power of two rather than an increasing power of 10. So this is the number of ones we have, the number of twos, fours, eights, 16s, 32s, 64s, 128s, and so on. Not nearly as efficient as base 10, but exponentially more efficient than tally marks, literally. So now that we know how binary works, let's talk about computers. Why did the first computer creators, as wise and intelligent as they are, waste their time with such an ineffective system of counting? Well, it's because of a physical limitation on how computers work. Everything a computer does comes down to what's known as microtransistors. Simple, tiny, incy bincy little switches that can either be on or off and can be flipped on or off with a very weak electrical charge. The first goal was to get computers to count. And to get them to count by using these switches, we could use the tally system, meaning the number of on switches equals the number of things we have, or we could use the much more efficient system of binary, where each switch represents a digit of binary. Eight transistors using the tally system could represent a number as large as eight by turning all of them on. With binary, we can represent a number as high as 255. An on switch means a one, and an off switch means a zero. Now is a good time to mention that a single transistor is what's known as a bit, which stands for binary digit. A byte is eight of these bits in a row, which means any number between zero and 255. So if binary is just a system of counting, what do people mean when they explain how to spell things in binary? 
Well, what they really mean is how to spell things with ASCII. The American Standard Code for Information Interchange is a way to convert a computer's data, which can only be in numbers, and turn it into letters for humans to have an easier time to work with. ASCII simply assigns a character to each value represented by a byte of binary. And because a byte has eight digits of binary to work with, and eight digits of binary can represent up to 255 values, ASCII had 255 letters and symbols to choose from, more than enough for the entire alphabet, punctuation marks, and other symbols. For example, the corresponding ASCII number for an uppercase A is 65. Now 65 in base 10 is equal to 1 million and 1 in binary. So whenever you type in an uppercase A in a word program, a coding program, or a scripting program or whatever, somewhere there's a little tiny row of eight transistors arranged in the pattern of off, on, off, 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 on, which represents 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 in binary, which is interpreted as 65 in base 10, which is converted by ASCII into an uppercase A. You're likely starting to get a feel for the staggering amount of transistors required to write something as simple as a Facebook status, let alone all the different coding that your computer has to do to make the screen light up, play games, calculate massive values, and so on. Well, long before we got to the point where your phone can play three-dimensional games, it became clear that numbers as high as 255 just weren't going to cut it. Regardless of how many bytes we had, and it was a lot, even adding four fully active bytes together could only get a number as high as 1020. To solve this problem, new computers were designed to recognize two bytes as one single number. So now instead of referencing one line of eight transistors, computers could reference two lines giving 16 digits worth of binary. This was a huge help because it increased the amount of representable numbers exponentially from 255 up to 65,535. When you hear people talking about the difference between 8-bit and 16-bit, this is more or less it. Now that doesn't mean that a 16-bit system is exponentially that much more powerful, because your program isn't always gonna be utilizing all of these numbers in each byte that it represents. It just has the option to, which opens up lots of doors. Well, this could go on for ages and ages, but I wanna end this particular video right here so as not to be overwhelming. All right. Any uh, comments on that? <laughs> so um, how the, well this binary thing, especially he talked about ASCII, right? It's actually related to the string that we're going to talk about this, this week. So what is a string? String basically is a collection of letters, right? And you know, internally, um, computer, now you know they use ASCII number to represent each letter. So really um, characters and string are for the human to consume. Uh, internally, they're still stored by numbers. Uh, even pictures can be stored um, using zero and ones because each pixel have uh, red, green, and blue values. And you can use um, you know, those combinations. And then you have like, maybe if you have eight bits, you have, you have 255 different gray uh, uh, brightness to represent each pixel, all right? And so, so you know, computer use zero and ones to represent everything. That's, that's in, in a nutshell. Okay, for strings, um, you can use single code, double codes in Python, they're the same. Um, the reason that you want to come, you know, use different codes because inside you may have a apostrophe or something, you want to uh, make it different than uh, the, you know, all the most codes that represent the string, right? So you may want to uh, escape it by uh, escape key and apostrophe. So make sure that this is actually <coughs> recognized as, as a letter or um, component or character in, in a string not the ending or starting of another string. So that's how, how you know you can use. And don't forget you have a doc string that you can use triple codes, right? Three codes. And that's typically used when you want to document your function or your code. And I do recommend you use comments a lot uh, in your code, even in your homework and uh, lab assignments starting this week on uh, forward, 
your code become bigger or longer and then making comment is very helpful, right? And that's a good industrial uh, standard to use a lot of comments, all right? So string is an immutable object. In Python, everything is the object, right? And it's against the um, common belief in other languages like C, C++, there's some prim uh, you know, primitive variables like int and float and, and so on. But in Python, everything is, up, even integer is the object. And that allows you to actually wrap a so-called big int into a small integer variable so that uh, it will give you automatically the freedom of expressing very big numbers, all right? Without uh, resulting to a library for big int like in Java or C++, okay? Um, you can concatenate a string using plus, okay? Um, and that's basically just to put two to string together, right? If you want a space in between, you have to literally add a uh, quotation space quotation mark to separate them. Okay, um, you can also use multiples, uh, multiply um, operator. It's, it's an overloaded uh, operation in strings. That means you want to print John uh, three times successively um, in one line, right? We already uh, encountered this string multiplication when we print the Super Mario blocks or in the pyramids and etc. You can use a function len and calling the string to get the length of the string. So John has a length of four. And you can also refer to individual characters inside the string using the square brackets. It's called indexing. So John of one refer to the second element in that string. Pay attention to that because the first element is referred to by the index zero. And as you know, the, in computer science, a lot of things start uh, counting from zero. It's called the zero-based counting. So that will um, sometimes give you some headache because you often have this called off by one error when are you um, trying to refer to the last element or the first element of, of, of a collection like list or string, right? So let me ask you this. If you have, um, you know, 10 things in, in, in 10 characters in your string, what's your index range? Is zero to 10 or zero to nine? Oh, in other words, how many did how many um, like apples uh, in range of one to a hundred? Right. So that's a hundred thing, right? So hundred minus one plus one is hundred. Don't forget about that. And if you want to do a slicing, which means you want to select the substring of a string, you can do that. So it it starts with the index beginning and stop with end. And in Python, the beginning index is already always selected. The end is not, okay? So John one colon three means select the second element O and the third element H, okay? So that's index one, two, and three. And is not selected because that's the open uh, parenthesis, right? So open-ended, uh, this open-ended slicing. So that will give you O and H. Okay, so if you don't believe me, let's do an example. Um, so string one is equal to, let's say, John. Okay, and let's print uh, string one and then slicing one colon three. Okay, just run it and you got OH, right? So that's, that's that. Okay, so what else you can do? Um, well, you can refer to um, the last element of a string or any collection by the index minus one. So if I do print string one um, minus one, guess what I got? The letter M, okay? So, so minus one refer to the last element of a collection. So if you don't, don't know the length of, of the string, right? You can also, of course, it's equivalent to the string one of, um, let's say, length of string one. Okay, let's see, is that correct? So here, you will have a common error indexed out of bound or out of range where length string one, let's print out length string one, okay? Print length of string one. 
All right, guess what? It's four. However, when you do an index, remember it's a zero base. You have to minus one here to get you back to the last element, right? Because there's four element that's zero, one, two, and three. So the last index is three, not four. So you have to minus one. If you run that, everything is fine. Okay, so this I so called off by one error because it's zero based. And if you see the out of bound uh, error, you will probably want to check if your index is really out of bound. Okay, um, any question on that so far? Is it good? All right, um, let's see. Yeah, if you have any questions, just, uh, you know, uh, speak I have up. A yes. Yeah, so uh, I don't understand how the OH uh, came from one to three. three. Yes, because I would mm -hmm. have thought like the one would have it would be G J H instead of OH. So one is the index, right? So index one of John is what letter? It should be J. No. Uh, no. I just uh, told you uh, a couple of minutes ago. Uh, index one refer to the second letter. The first letter is zero. Okay, it's zero based index. Okay, so it always starts with zero. It always starts with zero, exactly. Okay. So the first letter is always the string zero. So it's zero, one, two, three for four letter string. Uh -huh. Okay, I see. All right, so yeah, yeah. So maybe I shall um, slow down a little bit. Yeah, that's a good question. It's very important, you know. It start with zero. Everybody else, any anyone else, had this question? So it's zero based, okay? So zero based. based. Um, yeah. And also, if you um, if you want to print something, right? You have option now to use. Uh, so the print statement, as you know, if you concatenate uh, things together, a variable and literals. You can use comma in between and it will automatically give you a space in between these components, all right? And however, you can use the concatenation plus sign to put them together as one string. In that case, guess what? You need to manually uh, leave a space in between the variables so that when you print out, it print nicely, okay? So that's the two different, different things when you do a print. Any question on that? So don't forget when you use a comma, you will automatically get a space in between these two. But if you don't use a plus, you don't. You have, it doesn't matter how many space you enter here, the computer will not use this space and put it inside the string. Only the space inside the quotation mark counts, right? When you concatenate this variable, if the variable is all already a string, that's, that's good enough. However, if that variable is not a string, it's an int, then you have to convert to a string using string function. Any question on that? That's some common mistakes when you're doing the lab work or in, in the um, Zybox, right? So be careful about the type of things you want to concat in the ways. It has to be all string. Now in Java or C++, there is something called uh, auto converting. So Java auto boxing, Java will automatically upgrade uh, integer to a string when you're doing this concatenation, but not in Python. You have to specifically convert it yourself. Okay, so that's a function to convert a integer to a string. Um, yeah, so we talk about that. Uh, I think that's pretty much. Uh, um, uh, you need to know the branching statement in this, although we'll talk about branching in the next week, but I think uh, there's one lab um, that require a if statement. So I'm gonna briefly mention here. What if uh, branching means if you have uh, some condition, so, and then you have some expression, right? So these ex this code, this block of code I only run when this condition is true. Else block will run if this condition is not true, then else. So you give some, you have some branching here. And if you have multiple uh, branching, you can use if, else if, you can use many else if until you get the last call with else, okay? So that's the branching in a nutshell, right? So um, let me give you a, let's see, I don't wanna, uh, there should be a, okay, here. The 
you're also gonna uh, learn some like pseudocode of block diagram or uh, what do you call it? Uh, you, know, you know, program flow, flow chart, right? So basically this is like a simple flow chart for a branching statement. So you have some code running before maybe set up your environment. Then you have a test is uh, often traditionally diamond shape. And so if the test is true, see the arrow going to true and you put true here on your edges and you go to the, the body, right? This is for the for loop. And then if the uh, test is false, it goes out to another route and execute this code block. So when you do branching, that's the diamond shape that represent branching, right? You have a if condition here and you do some, and if it's a loop, well, we'll talk about looping chapter three or four. Then you go back to the beginning and test until this test is false, then you're out of the loop. So loop is basically branching with re repetition, right? So I'm gonna just briefly mention that and we'll talk about in details in uh, later, but I just, and for the loop, there's two types of loop. There's while loop, there's for loop. Um, we'll talk about details again, um, but again, just like if and you need a column at the end, for, for this line and then an indentation, usually four spaces or a tab to um, in, indicate that this belongs to this while block, not and you know the rest of the, uh, the code. So Python using indentation and white spaces to indicate the code blocks. And uh, um, another language you use a square bra uh, curly brackets and uh, semicolon to indicate it. And there's no semicolon here and certainly no uh, square brackets or curly brackets for code block because these are used for other data structure like dictionary and list. Okay, so use loops and branches, your code will be much more powerful because you can now repeat things again and again. All right, so that's that's a nutshell about uh, strings, but I think that in the side books there's more details about how string works. Okay, so just go through them and activities help you to understand the concept. Okay, so, and we talk about a little about other con container type, right? String is immutable because if you, uh, hold on. Um, if you have string one equal to drawn, right? You can, you do like string one, you can, you can print. Can you say string one is equal to um, like A? So basically, can you modify this? directly on string one, let's run it. You can see that's not allowed, right? It says object does not support item assignment. Okay, because this string is immutable. When you create a string in, in, a, in the memory space, it's, it's basically fixed. You cannot modify it. But some of them say, oh, wait a second, I can do this, right? String y equal to string one plus something else like Smith. Well, that's legal, that's perfectly fine, okay? However, if you do that, guess what? Your string one is just a variable, right? It points to a different memory area. So it creates a copy of, of uh, John and contained with Smith, and that belongs to a different uh, memory space. So the original John memory space is no longer there. Okay, to prove that in Python, there is a function called ID. ID basically says, what is this memory location or address of this variable, right? I'm gonna print out this ID so we can see if they are the same ID or different ID, okay? It could be, you can see that the first ID is 1405A2, whatever that is, it's, a different ID than the last ID. So basically when you create a string like that, you literally destroy this original memory and create a new memory. So you cannot modify this original memory. That's what we mean by string is immutable, okay? Um, but however, there's another data structure called a list, okay? List in Python is mutable and that's perfect for things that you want to uh, increase or shrink the size of, of the container. So a uh, simple list is like uh, list one is equal to, uh, let's say um, one, two, three, four, five. So a list of integers, right? List can have um, 
many types. We can have A, B, um, C, right? Or you can even have list of three is a list of strings, apple, orange, and you can even mix things. You can say list of four is equal to list of one plus list of two plus list of three plus list of four. So you can actually append Four, uh, there's no list four, <laughs> three lists together, right? So let me print list four, okay? So let's just uh, get rid of this and run it. As you can see, list four is the concatenation of these four lists, uh, numbers, uh, characters, strings, okay? So a list can, don't need to be uh, homogeneous, that means, they can have different type in that list. It's very versatile. So list is very powerful. Now list also have a, uh, you can also uh, use a function to, to convert a string to a list. Like, you know, let's say a string one is equal to apple, right? What if I say, um, print, uh, let's say list, list one is string one dot uh, split. Okay, let's see what happens. And then print list. Okay, print the list one. All right, let's run it. Okay, so um, let's see. Um, let's use a space. So split without anything that by default will split the string into a list of strings separated by the space. So if I say apple, orange, okay, banana, and then if I run that, you'll get a list of, list of apple, orange, and banana. So you can see we actually split this long string into three separate elements, okay? So that's how to convert a string. So basically this is useful when you have an input, right? Um, say like user input, you know, uh, I think, uh, let's see, in our lab, um, yeah, yes, 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 cool. Um, let's look at our lab, uh, let's see, this lab, no, um, this lab, name format, right? So it, the input is basically a, a, a long string and it will output a um, different, you know, name with the uh, um, initials based on the input, the full name, right? And so you can use a list to a split function to get, a, you know, the element. And then you can do something about it, right? So you, this split is, is useful for the lab 2.12, okay? If you haven't uh, looked at the list uh, before. So, um, like um, apple, orange, banana, you split, you can have list one. What if I want to print, not just that, right? I want to print, uh, I want to capitalize apple, right? So I know list has three elements, right? So the list one, uh, list zero, right? What is list one zero? It's apple, right? It's the first element in, in the list, okay? So, just to remember, um, let me run that. Let me just copy this so so that you can remember it. Right, I'm just so that's your list, right? So list one of zero refer to this apple. What about list one of zero zero? What does that refer to? Anyone? List one of zero is the whole string apple. What about list one of zero and zero? List one zero is what apple, right? A-P-P-L-E. So it's zero, refer, refer to the string apple zero, right? So basically, 
and do Python. If you do apple of zero, it gives you letter A, right? So basically list zero, zero, zero is the letter A. And I want to capitalize, you can say dot to upper. That will give you the capitalized, oh, string object has no attribute to upper. Uh, huh. What is that function? Oh, upper? upper. Yeah. To upper is the Java syntax. Very good. Upper. So lower is convert that to lower case. Upper is convert to the upper case. Okay. So if I want to convert this to apple dot o and b, so I would say, um, oh, there is another another function. We don't need to um, just uppercase a, right? Uh, we can do dot capital capital. Is that, is that right? Let's run it. Uh, no attribute capital. See, this this ID is not good. In, in the local ID, they will uh, give me a hint, like uh, capital. So can someone um, Google search what's the um, string master to capitalize the string? Just Google it. Capitalize. Someone Google it? Yeah, it's capitalize. So if you do capitalize, you'll get Apple with a capital A. You may need this um, method to, to make sure that your user input, because user may give you different uh, you know, cases, right? But you want to can, can, you know, make it consistent. So you may as well just capitalize it. And you know it's going to be a certain format. Then you can process with confidence, right? So you capitalize this, but I also want Right, I can I can continue. I want the space, okay, and I also want uh, the initial of letter of the second one. So first um, of one, right? That's the second one, the middle one, middle initial. If you want, if it's a somebody's middle initial, and I want to want the zero element, which is O, and I want to do upper, okay, because I want to convert to um, to the uppercase. All right, so is there any mistake here? Maybe I'm missing a parenthesis. I think they are paired, right? I don't know why it still give me some, oh, you see the variable name is list one. That's another common mistake that you have to be sure that all your variables are matching, right? If you miss the letter, then it's not good. Let's run it, Apple O. Uh, maybe I shall also add, the list one of two zero, right? Or I can do minus one zero. Remember minus one is the last element. So it's the last name, right? Last name um, and dot upper. Okay, let's run it again. You can have apple OB. Oh, I need a, a maybe a dot in between. Okay, so make it more like a middle initial and plus, okay, and run. And then maybe I want a comma here, okay, and uh, run it. Uh, maybe the comma is closed. So you can use this to control the output. Any question on that? Hopefully you can practice a lot with uh, slicing and and uh, capitalize and everything, right? So now you have knowledge of a list and list slicing is very similar to string slicing, right? You still have uh, from one to um, actually um, there is, um, let's see, um, for the string slicing, you can also print um, string one. Let's do a slicing, okay? So this time I'm gonna start with one, which is the second element, right? Colon, um, and I'm going to all the way to minus two. So I don't want the last element and I'm gonna do two. So what does that mean? So 
there is a third parameter in this uh, a third uh, parameter in in this list slicing, which means it will skip two, right? Skip one when they count the number. So it will get uh, P, right? And skip this next one and go to L and skip next one, get a space and skip next one, get the R, skip next one, get the N, skip next one, get the E, skip next one, get the B and N and N. Well, does that give you N? We'll see. It gives you PL space R N E D N. It does give you an N. So basically this two is to skip one letter. Right? If you want to skip two letter, you get step equal to three. So this third element is called step. So basically the slicing is start, which is included, and which is not included, and step, which is how long you want to go. If you want to go backwards, you can use minus one. So it will go backwards. And I'm starting from minus one. Oh, sorry. Minus one to. If I omit, that means all the way to the beginning, right? So if I do that, I, I literally uh, inverted a string. Let's look at this. Oh, so syntax error. So I need to give the end. But this one will. Hmm, interesting. Uh, oh, because of that, I'm sorry. This is a comment, right? So run it again. Here you go. So that's a complete um, reverse of that string, A and A and A, B, right? E, G, N, A, O, N, F, A, okay? So let me ask you this then. I don't want to invert every single character. I only want to invert the words. So instead of apple, orange, banana, I want to print backwards, banana, orange, apple. Do you have any idea how to do that? See, if I do this, you know, thing, right? It will do reverse. However, it reverses every single character. I don't want that. I want to inverse just the, the, the words, you know what I mean? So what you can do, Think about if I convert to a list, right? I already convert a list and apple or banana. So when I print this list, I can print um, list one. I can go from minus one to, you know, if I don't do anything, uh, it will just go to all the way to the beginning, right? And then, then run it. So you can see banana, orange, apple, that's reversed. Now that's not quite because it's a list. I want a string how to assemble a list to a string. Well, just like a split to split the string into a, a list, we can do something called join, right? It's very, very uh, intuitive. You can join uh, the list one of minus one, column, column, minus one together and to make a string. So print this guy. So it's a string now, you can print, right? Uh, okay, so now run it. Now you can see banana, orange, apple. Of course, you want to uh, have a space. So I'm gonna do a space and join. So that join will also use a space in between this uh, elements. So and run again, you can see banana, orange, apple. Problem solved. Now me, let me ask you this. If I add a zero here, Will that do what I wanted? Oh no, it's missing a first element. Why is that? Can anybody tell me? What's the difference between you have a zero here versus you don't have anything here? Remember the syntax, let me just put it here is, ah, sorry. The syntax is uh, start, Start. Oh, somebody want want to say something here? Step. Okay, this is the syntax. Now the end is not included. Mathematically, it's a like this is start. This is end, and using this brackets, right? So mathematically, you know, uh, start is included, end is not. 
So if I put the zero, zero is not included, which is that means discard the first element. That's why I can't put anything here. If you omit, it will by default go all the way to the end or to the beginning, depends on the direction you're going. Is that clear? Maybe, um, you know, just take a look at the Zybook. There's a lot of you know, details talking about this string manipulation, how to convert that to a list and back to a string, right? So I think that's the essence that you need to master um, string and lists and, and stuff. So, and the slicing is very convenient and very useful, especially the negative one syntax that refer to the net, you know, last element, which is very, very handy. Okay, when you reverse something, just think about that a lot. And also the string function like upper, capitalize, lower, and uh, and they have like find, count, right? So you can have uh, string one dot count, I don't know, count the substring like uh, AN, I don't know. How many AN are there in that string? You can use a count, right? Come on, print. And you can tally that. Of course, you can write your own function to, uh, I don't know why. All right, so let's run it. You can see there's three ANs, AN, AN, and what is the other? Here's AN in the orange. Okay, so you can use that function. I think one of the labs is to count which one is the, that's, we literally talk about this lab one, right? So we don't want to do that. And uh, creating passwords, I think we just need to... mm. count, yeah, count lab uh, 2.13 is count characters. You can, now here, this is one line, right? You need to split this into um, different uh, list items and then combine them, okay? So basically it asks you to write a program Input a string which contains a character and a phrase, and whose output indicates the number of times the character appears in a phrase. So you can use count better to count number of times, but the phrase you have to extract it using what? Using a, um, maybe string of zero, right? Um, and, and so on. And string slicing. I think here, string slicing is good enough. You don't need to convert to a list, right? Just string slicing. So the zeros element. Uh, is the uh, character or you know you want to you want to search for and then there's a space in between right and then maybe this is a third element that is starting from third to the end how to uh, do that here refer to three to the end right it's basically um, string one from let's see so the uh, second element is one, third element is two to the end. That's it. All right, so if you run that, you will print, you know, the third element all the way to the end, banana. But if you put a zero, oh, sorry, minus one here, because this means you think, oh, minus one is the end of the character. Now you are missing one character, right? Because remember, this is open ended. So you have to just omit that to get all the way to the end. All right, so that's some nuances or to deal with slicing and string and uh, uh, split. Now, of course, split, you can use, uh, you can use some, something different character other than the space. Space is default, right? Um, and you can use, say, I want to use orange as a split. What does that mean? Let's run it. So basically now it's, it's banana and apple. Orange is missing because orange is a delimiter now. So you see the orange and just ignore that and just collect the one before the orange, before and after orange. Orange is essentially the delimiter for the whole string. So it become just apple and banana. Okay. Notice that banana has a extra space in front because this space is actually, and, and Apple has extra space before, after, because this space is no longer part of the eliminator and it's part of the useful string. It's only orange. If you want to also get rid of the space, you can use just a space before and space after, and then you will have, 
just a banana and apple with no space. Okay, so the split can use any arbitrary um, characters as a delimiter, not just the space. Space is a default. So that's another thing that you may use creatively to, to step. So split function in string, count function, find function, and those, those commonly used functions, uh, you want to remember it and, and use that often. And join method is very important. If you have a list you want to put together as a string, you use join. Any questions on that? So yeah, I mean, I think I mentioned most of the technique used for the three labs and uh, list. And then there's, of course, finally, another uh, data structure called a dictionary. I, we all talk about it later, um, but this is a very important data structure too. List is like, um, you, you have to, no lists, right? So let's see, dictionary. Um, dictionary is basically a key value pair or sometimes we call it map. So it's map some key to a value, right? So it's using square brackets and inside each item is separated by the comma like this. However, the key and the item for each, each uh, element consume, uh, it consists of a key and a value. In this case, this is a key is a string and value is a number, integer, right? Um, and, but you can switch, right? You can have a key as integer and value as a, as a string or anything actually for the key, the only requirement is it's not, it, it's unique, right? Key has to be unique. But the value can be redundant. You can have multiple uh, same values for different keys. That's okay. So for the values, you can use any Python types as a value, even, if it's a dictionary itself. Uh, again, I mentioned that you can have a list of lists, list of dictionaries, list of a dictionary of dictionaries, a dictionary of lists, a dictionary of dictionary of dictionary of lists. Okay, so you can, you can do a lot of, uh, um, you know, recursive inclusion of all the elements. So that makes this uh, data structure more powerful because you can do so much more, right? So I guess you have to be practicing all the slicing and, and for the dictionary, you just refer to um, the key value and you get a value, right? So, so this will print all the dictionaries here. Um, and if you refer to the value, you can just say um, dictionary name and then square brackets and the key is the string. So just like access to the list, you can think about the list as a dictionary with indexing from with a key as an uh, index, um, with a key from zero to M minus one, right? So for N numbers, okay? So, um, so that's dictionary. Um, like you, you can see that it, it refers to the dictionary number by the dictionary name and square brackets and with a key. So dictionary is like you, your key is no longer just the integer anymore. It can be anything that is unique. Um, you can even use a tuple or a string or a number. Uh, don't use floating number, which is tricky. So, and here is a summary of common data types. And uh, you can see there's a lot of uh, similarity in between. A string is a collection. They are collections, right? String is a collection of characters. List is a collection of anything. It's homogeneous or uh, heterogeneous. Tuple is also a collection of anything, however, <laughs> tuple is not mutable. So once you create a tuple, you cannot modify the content. You cannot refer to it. That's why tuple is more lightweight than a list. Okay, set is basically a container is mutable, but it has a unordered and unique elements in set. Just like a mathematical set, right? You can use that to eliminate duplicate things. So if you want to make sure items in the set are unique, use a set. A dictionary, like I said, is a mapping from a key to a value, okay? So these are just like a, a dictionary, you look up a uh, definition is a value and the individual word is a key. And then, then there is a different uh, container types that you wanna choose for different applications, okay? Uh, so overall your week one homework is pretty good. Most of you get four score. For those of you who have troubles, I guess most of because you have a white space and you're not, you know, you have some typos 
and you uh, forget to close parentheses, all against very stupid errors. Computers are stupid, right? If you give them garbage, they give you garbage out. So be careful about, sometimes the error message is not direct, the error is not directly at the line number that they point to you, it may be the line before. So be careful about that. Debugging is a art, you need to get more time on it, right? So, so yeah, that's the, basically, let's see what else I need to mention. So three labs, yeah, I talk about the string method, slicing and uh, splitting and drawing strings, right? So you can split using any delimiter like here, so like pass name, you can split by the forward slash and, and so on. So yeah, take a look at this, this is very useful. Um, and also additional print statement formatting, uh, it talks a lot about, about string formatting. You can have this kind of formatting, right? You have curly brackets, like a placeholder for your variables and then dot format and with the actual variables, number and amount into each positional places. So, so that's another recommended way to, to use a string. Of course, in Python 3.6 or seven or later, you have any uh, F string, which um, let's see if he mentioned F string here or not, um, let's see. So yeah, go through this slide box and they give you a lot of details that I don't have time to present today. Just to look it up and the formatting, there's a lot of detail that I don't remember. I need to refer to this as well, I'll Google it, right? Um, how to, you know, represent the different digits or, you know, format like, you know, uh, in accounting or other finance industry, there is different format to refer to numbers. So yeah, take a good look of those and you don't need to memorize it. You just remember it when you use a lot, right? If I don't use a lot, I just forget about it. But I can know where to, where to look up. I know there is a lot of uh, um, method in string, okay? Um, yeah. So F string, string method. Oh, there is also a replace that's very useful. Uh, you can replace some substring with another string. So in the passwords actually you can replace some uh, password input to another one. So to make a new password. And there is a find, uh, it returns the index where the first uh, letter of that string is found. Okay. Um, and you can use count to come how many times it, it will, uh, you know, it will give you uh, substring. So yeah, string, and, and like I said, uh, each string is representing internal uh, decimal number, uh, okay, sorry, binary number. Um, and uh, you can convert the decimal to binary, binary to decimal. Um, um, so, you know, and there is a function in Python to convert back and forth, which is CHR. If you give them a number 54, I don't know what that is, I'm gonna print, Actually, let's just go chr, uh, let's go down here, Python, in the interpreter, chr uh, 54. I don't even know what that is. It's a character six. And they can use ORD to get that character, get back the uh, ASCII number of that string. Okay, so ORD give you ASCII number, chr convert that ASCII number to a, to a string. Okay, so you can use that a lot. Uh, later on, we will have a like uh, encryption decryption exercise of or a game. Uh, you can use that to uh, like there's some cipher called Caesar cipher, which is to rotate ASCII numbers certain number of of uh, distances. You can use this uh, you know two function to convert uh, you know position into into character and vice versa. So CHRORD are very important functions as well for character. Um, and ASCII conversion, okay? You know, uh, you already know what ASCII number is. Basically is a, a number of representation of characters. Okay, so I think that that's the gist of today's lecture. Any questions? I, I will stay a little bit longer in case you have some question for last week. But other than that, uh, I'm gonna stop the recording. Um,